I am standing on two of the cheapest options for garage flooring tiles. And in today's video, we're gonna be putting these things through a little bit of a torture test and trying to get them to fill so we know exactly what to expect out of these things. Now the first one up is going to be the Vivor tiles, also known as Happy Buy tiles on Amazon. Those are right here. Again, this is the one that kind of resembles that Swiss Tracks race deck look. It's a drainage tile and a lot of people uh, talk about, well, that's cool that they drain if you're actually washing on top of it, but if you're not, things can actually fall in between all of them and then are you really even keeping your floor clean? That's a great question. We're gonna be talking about that here shortly. These ones retail for a, as low as $1.56 per square foot, so fantastic value there. Uh, the other ones are from a brand called Versatex, also available on Amazon. Again, it's the coin style flooring. Looks great as well. Um, no drainage, so you don't have to worry about stuff falling through the cracks. These things retail, I can't remember the exact price, either between $1.70 and $1.80 a square foot, which is the cheapest I could find for that style of flooring. Now these tiles have been in my garage for about two weeks or so. Um, I haven't done anything with them, so what we're gonna do, first things first, pull the car out, let's inspect them. Okay, so now that we have the car out of the way, we can actually see these a bit better. The first test that we're gonna be kind of inspecting and doing is going to be the cleanliness test. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these and just see how they appear after doing nothing to them for about two weeks. All right guys, so here are the Vivor tiles and as you can see, there's stuff sitting on top of them um, and definitely some stuff in between as well. So definitely uh, that concern is warranted for sure. But overall, these still look super, super clean. We switch over to the tile style or sorry, coin style of flooring here. And obviously there's stuff sitting on top, but you can see all these footprints on it versus with the Vivors, they don't show footprints in comparison. Like you can see, I just walked the whole thing, nothing there. And I just put that track in right there, just one step and it's put it in. So uh, I would say initial just appearance of cleanliness those guys are gonna take the wind. Um, one of the benefits is that things can kind of fall in between like that, right? But at the angle, you don't even see it, right? So that's one thing. So if we're looking at just appearances and you're looking at getting something, some kind of a flooring in your garage just to make it really kind of tie it all in and make it look like a showroom condition type of garage, between these two, I'm gonna go with that one. Now let's go ahead and take a blower, just blow these off real quick and get all the junk off of them. All right guys, I'm happy to say that those little leaves and stuff that were stuck in there blew right out, which I was not expecting. I was expecting to have to take a vacuum or something to it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you that really quickly. So uh, let's see here if we can find any of them in here anymore. Uh, I mean, little, let's see here, little specks of stuff, like, but very, very little. Everything else blew right out and looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and expect, inspect this from the other direction. Again, the Vivor looks brand new and absolutely perfect. The, uh, the coin style looks dirty. So obviously just you know, running a wet mop over that is gonna clean it up. But if you want something that's going to just give you the ease of it looking its best, it seems like that's gonna be the way to go. Even though a lot of people complain about you know, stuff falling between, which 100% warranted guys, I agree. If you drop a screw or something like that through there, pain in the butt. But if you, again, if you're looking for something where it's more of an appearance thing. That's gonna be your choice. If you're doing heavier work, maybe these guys, let's go ahead and start testing these and seeing where the breaking point is. So test number one, guys, let's test impact. Have a good sized hammer here. I can't remember what the weight, a two and a half pound, little mini sledgehammer kind of deal, engineer's hammer apparently. And then this little basic uh, hoe type of a, what's, what is this thing, what do they call this? A two prong weeder hoe. So um, obviously this isn't super heavy, but it does have a nice sharp edge to it. We're gonna whack these things and see if, what kind of damage they do. So let's go ahead and start off with the hammer. And I'm gonna try and film this on my phone for you guys as well. And so we're gonna test it over here, um, right on these two corners here. So we have a good visual. Um, obviously, I'm expecting obviously these guys to hold up a whole lot better than, than this is to whacking it with a hammer. Uh, but let's find out. So I'm just gonna do the same amount of pressure, same kind of, uh, you know, height here between the two. Wow, it did compress that coin, interesting, and did leave a mark. Let's go ahead and do it, ah, we'll just leave it there. This one now, same, same pressure. Yep, and definitely did pop that down as well. Not as bad as I was expecting. I was kind of 
thinking that would do a lot more damage than that, but definitely, man, I don't know. If you're looking at the two of them, it's definitely there, but gosh, this might be more visible. Does it clean up? Yeah, it cleans up pretty good. Let's go ahead and do a couple more wax. There's five all on that one piece. Um, and if you look at that, guys, because it compressed that, it's causing this to peel up. Now, someone actually commented on my last video where I talked about all these different flooring tiles, which I'll link up in the description for you guys. And they mentioned that the Blue Hawk tiles from Lowe's were better. They, they, that was the choice that they, they had used um, that worked much better. They had laid a bunch of different flooring and the Blue Hawk ones from Lowe's were the way to go. I did cover those in that first video, so go check that out. All right, so I just did five wax to that. Let's do five wax to this. All right, so definitely damaged. That thing's toast, um, but well, So if you look, damaged, damaged, um, overall appearances. Man, I'm surprised that the Viva is hiding that pretty well. And now guys, why am I whacking this thing with a hammer? Obviously that's not something that you would normally do, right? But I wanna kind of um, put in some, think of some real world situations where maybe have a gallon of paint up on a shelf and it falls down, doesn't pop open, but it falls down and whacks the floor. What's, what's that gonna do to the flooring? And I think this is a relatively good representation of that. So uh, both floors are damaged. The Vivor compressed, it, it is broken. Um, well, actually it didn't break, but compressed. And then the other one, the Versatex, the coin flooring, compressed and lifted an edge. Um, so that is more concerning to me than anything else that it's lifting an edge now, because that's gonna ruin the whole flooring. Um, let's move on to the hoe. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna do it on the same tile just so I don't completely destroy all these. I'm gonna take this just like this. I'll try and hit it towards the edge more actually. Here we go, same pressure between the two. Okay, definitely gouged it. Big time gouge. I mean, that's, that's not going anywhere. That's always gonna be visible. Let's do it on the Viva. I'm gonna try and hit it up here. Ready? I'm gonna hit that again because I accidentally hit the side here, I think and it felt like it just wanted to resist it. Now, it definitely chunked in, for sure. Um, but, again, it kind of hides it. Not too bad. Let me do that again on the V-Bar. So, here is the damage. Definitely chunked in. Like, severe, I mean, you know, that's definitely damaged. Uh, we'll do one more on the Versatex. So once again, right through that coin uh, piece there, all the way through, that's not gonna hide. This one's not, I mean, to be fair, that's not hiding it either, but it is blending in a bit more than that, right? Now I have some good friends with Swiss Tracks flooring, um, which again, fantastic product. I absolutely love that stuff. Uh, that is the big daddy of these, tiles, the, these style of flooring, right? That's the one that's been around, been tested, fantastic product. Now, with that said, uh, he owns a tint shop. And when you're doing tint, you're using a heat gun quite a bit. And he said this, like they keep tiles in the back because when the tinter, this is just a cheap uh, heat gun from Harbor Freight, but I wanted to use this one because it does have the exposed tip. And when you're using it, you're heating up this element here, right? Using the heat gun. And then they put this down on the floor and it melts the floor. So I wanted to check the melting point of these floors to see where we're at. Um, I have a, little infrared thermometer deal. So we'll test the temperature as this is blowing on it. Um, and then we'll just let it blow for a while, see what it heats up to. And then we will actually tap this on the surface of the tile and see what it does. So for this test, I did not get an extension cord. This is my new garage, new home. Um, I haven't transferred everything over yet. I don't wanna go searching for an extension cord in one of the boxes. So we're just gonna take a tile of each of these off I have a plug right there, we'll just get closer to it and then deal with it that way. So first things first, let's go ahead and remove a tile. With that, guys, I wanna show you how easy it is to remove a tile from these systems. Um, obviously, these ones are a, li a little bit more tricky. Um, you have to lift one side and depress one side, so this one would be low. Nope, wait, there you go, knock it down. This one pushes down, comes right up, and then this one would 
you just gotta get that out of the way. There we go. And then lift it up. Jeez. So, wait. Oh, sorry, down again. So, my mistake, down in both situations. Um, not super easy to remove, so keep that in mind. That's one of the things that people always say is like, oh, if you get stuff underneath it, um, just remove one of the tiles. It's not super easy to do, don't, don't fall for that. <laughs> These ones, on the other hand, super easy, literally just peel one side, peel the other side, we have it off. So as far as ease of removal for any sort of standing or anything like that, these guys are definitely gonna be the winner. The other thing you do wanna consider though is moisture in the slab. We talked about in the, in the first video. These ones are gonna trap the moisture versus these are gonna let it vent out. Um, and that's a very important thing. You don't wanna trap the moisture in the slab underneath this, it can cause issues down the road. Another thing guys is that both of these flooring options are both floating style options. So if you don't have it butted up against the wall or you know, just giving it that little bit of gap for expansion, they can move when you turn your wheel. Even the big name uh, brands will do that of this kind of flooring. So just keep that in mind. If you keep the vehicle moving and turn, you're good. But if you have it in the stationary position, all that weight sitting on a tile and then you just turn the wheel, that can cause it to buckle up. So just keep that in mind. That's gonna be the same with any style uh, or floating style of flooring. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the heat test. Okay, so up first is going to be the Vivor tile. Let me get this into frame for you. Let's see here, where we at? Um, so we're gonna test this one. Again, we're just gonna put the heat gun on it. I'll be testing the temperature with the infrared uh, little temperature gauge here. So let's do it. Let's see, there's a low and a high. Let's go here. I'm gonna focus on a corner um, and then test it from there. Let's see here. There you go, we're heating up quite quickly. 110 degrees, 120, 30 degrees. There we go, 170, 180, 90. I'm not seeing any change to the flooring yet. Whoa, 230, here we go. Two forty to kind of seems like it kind of peaked at two forty. So let's just run this a little bit longer. I'm gonna stop it real quick. Feels hot. Feels a little bit gummed up, guys. Well, let's see here. Oh, there we go. We got some damage. Let me go ahead and video that for you. Not a lot, but there you go. You can see some starting to kind of melt down the surface and that one inside there as well. The surface is hot, very, very hot. So um, yeah, it's very hot. Let's get it closer. Actually, let's go ahead and do the test now where we touch the tip of it, rest it on there. Yep, we burned right through, as you can see right there. And that was after that was sitting for a little bit. So we'll do the same for the other one, let it sit and then test it. As far as color fastness goes though, color's good. Color didn't have any issue. Uh, did it darken a little bit? No, it didn't. It looks good. Color is, is still really strong. All right, guys, next one up, the coin tile, coin style of flooring. We're gonna hit this corner here. Um, here we go. There we go. We're almost to 200. There we go, 220, 240, 75, wow, two, we're gonna get to 290, 290, Hitting 300. Three ten. All right, coming back down. Looks like three ten may be our max point there, and we definitely do have some distortion. Uh, let me video that for you. So there you go. A little bit. 
This almost looks like on camera that it is changing color. I don't really notice that in real life, maybe a little bit, but not bad. But as you can see, the texture has changed. It has melted. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the top of this on there. Yeah, same thing. I mean, that's to be expected, right? The tip of this thing is probably crazy hot. Again, when we're inspecting for color fastness, like there's a, a sheen change. It glossed up a little bit, but overall it handled that very, very well. So uh, I don't mind that. Um, so maybe if you're doing, if, you know, a tint style, tint style shop and you don't need um, it, any ventilation or, and you're not too concerned, you want it to look better, but you don't mind mopping your floor every night, um, this may be a better choice because even though it did melt, once it hit the contact point, um, it's so easy to swap these things out. Okay guys, so if we're gonna give a winner to the heat test, it's gotta be these guys. Um, the Vivor didn't seem to heat up as much and I think it's because they're vented. Uh, these got to about 240, these hit 300, I think, um, which makes sense. It would absorb and probably keep, keep oh, that's the side that I did, uh, keep absorbing heat and, and increasing that temperature. Um, but as far as, man, you know, they both handled it well enough. Um, again, this one didn't get as hot. This one showed some melting point at that 240. This one, again, it also did, it changed the sheen, but not bad at all. Like, I, I'm actually pretty, Pretty impressed with this one. Um, I'm gonna give the win to, to these guys for that. Uh, this one just seemed to create a little more damage than that one. Again, this one actually went up to a higher temperature. I just inspected the video and it kind of looks like I'm not pointing the heat gun directly at the panel. Trust me, I was, it was just the angle. Uh, I was pointing it right to where I had the dot of the, uh, uh, of the thermometer, so, uh, but anyways, I would give it to these guys. If you're looking for something that's heat resistant, if you're doing any high heat stuff in your garage, again, if it still if it gets damaged, these ones are so easy to pop out versus these ones are not quite as easy. You got these tabs you have to lift and kind of finagle stuff, whereas this one just pop it out no problem. Um, you may have to take a couple out in, in, in one direction, but they go right back down very, very easily. So uh, now that that heat is done, Let's go ahead and throw a torch on these guys and see if we can get some damage going that way. Uh, just in case you're doing any, say welding or something like that in an open flame, or not necessarily open flame, but little sparks hit it. Um, let's check. All right guys, we got a little burn zomatic uh, propane torch here. Uh, I'm just gonna just kind of turn it on, go back and forth across them each. Um, we'll, we'll count how many times I go across. So I'm gonna try and keep it in the same direction. We'll go, let's see here. Try and make this as even as possible. One, two, three, four. We'll go four of the coins versus one little mini square here. One quarter of this one. We'll let's go back and forth, see what it does over how many passes. All right, so I'm gonna open up the propane, fire it on. There we go. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Oh, geez. All right, well, that was six passes. Um, and then we kind of flamed out, which was weird. Uh, it's melted, for sure. You can see it's glossy, let me touch it. And you can see my fingerprints in there now. Color fastness again, though. I I'm shocked the color hasn't burned out or anything. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Let's go ahead and move on to the other one now. What did we get to four passes, I think? Let's see here. On again, here we go. One, two, three, four. Guys, this test might be a bust. Um, my apologies, whatever, that got three passes and it did nothing. Again, this one absorbs heat a lot better than that one, um, which, yeah, it, it, this one's gonna be the winner for the heat. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on with this thing. I usually use the kind where it has a trigger on and off, um, but w where you can dial in a little bit more. This is just the basic kit. I don't know why it's just flashing out like that. Anyways, I think we got a close enough comparison between the two. Uh, uh, still confirming the Versatech handled it better. Neither of them had any color change, but this one definitely did get to a melting point. Um, if we had just let it cool, I don't think it would have been any issue um, before touching it, but you know, whatever, just uh, something to know. Okay, now next up, let's put some chemical chemicals on these and see what they do. We have Goof Off, common 
garage item, right? And some lacquer thinner, also a very common garage item. Um, I'm assuming, just again, I haven't done this test, but I'm assuming this one's gonna handle it better because it feels less porous um, than this one does. And the majority of the product is gonna fall right through. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, for, for keeping it in good condition, it's a good thing, but it's also a very bad thing because the cleanup, you're gonna have to lift this thing up to get under and clean it or take a vacuum, but then you're gonna stop some residue. So ideally you'd wanna pop this up and clean underneath it, which yeah, is a pain. So let's go ahead and start off with the goof off. All right guys, so we're just gonna take the goof off and pour a little bit onto the tile. There you go. Same thing over here. And yeah, as you can see, the majority of it's just falling right through. So um, again, great if your garage is on a proper grade uh, or is slant so that you can just rinse it out. Um, or if you have a drainage system in your garage and these are laying over the top, then that's awesome. However, I think the majority of us don't have that option, right? We're buying houses that have been built previously. We're, we're not custom doing stuff here. Um, we have to live with what it is and this is what it is. So again, with these ones, yeah, man, you're gonna have to lift it up to get under there. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, let's go ahead and inspect them now with the phone. So as you can see, all the goof off is sitting under. There's some beading right on top of here. So it's just kind of fighting it off, looks good. And then this one, it's definitely just sitting right on top. So we're gonna let these sit for, I don't know, maybe five minutes and I'll come back and revisit them and take a look. Okay guys, so it's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead and inspect. Um, Let's see here, here we go. So the drainage tile handled it really well. It's a solvent, goof off the solvent, so it absor it uh, flashed out pretty quickly. Not really anything left behind. Let's go ahead and lift it up. Floor is fine. I mean, obviously I don't wanna leave it like that. I would wanna rinse it down, um, but overall looking pretty good. And then on the other one, it's still sitting on there. Um, let's go ahead and just wipe up the rest. And color fastness, everything looks good. Doesn't affect the texture, so all good there. These hold up, both of them hold up to goof off quite well. Again, with these ones, it does drain through though. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the lacquer thinner. Uh, is there gonna be any difference from this one versus the goof off? I don't know, that's why we're testing, right? So let's go ahead and do the exact same test. I'm gonna put them in a different spot though, so we're not doubling up. So lacquer thinner and lacquer thinner. Again, lacquer thinner is another solvent base, so it should flash out pretty quickly for the Vivor tile. Um, again, we're gonna let these sit for about five minutes and we'll come back. All right guys, we are five minutes in. Actually a little bit longer, that, that went a little bit long, but uh, let's go ahead and inspect. The Vivor looks perfect, um, completely dry under, so not an issue there. Well, I mean, I guess a little bit of moisture there maybe, or it's just discoloration. Oh yeah, it's just discoloration on the floor. Did that? I almost feel a little bit of, wow, did that cause a divot in the floor? It might have, that's insane, um, I don't know. Uh, on the other one, on the Versatex, there's definitely some staining going on right now. Let's just go ahead and try and wipe it up. It dried on there completely. And that wiped up, no problem at all. So guys, I know we're not going into anything crazy here for the, um, the chemicals, paint and all that kind of stuff. It seems like, I mean, if you spill paint on it, you can use a thinner and you're not gonna have any issues. So cleanup is really, really good. Um, still, so was this one. However, like I said, it does let it pass through the floor. And I honestly, where that went, I feel a divot in the floor, which I don't know. Doesn't make any sense to me, but maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know, maybe it does that, who knows. Um, so anyways, chemical resistance, all that kind of stuff, I'd have to go with this one. All right guys, so there you have it. Just a quick test between those two. Man, heat resistant, chemical resistance, ease of cleanup. Um, have to go with the Versatex, the, uh, this guy here. Um, as far as impact resistance goes, both of them took impact equally hard. Uh, I mean, if you look at this one, it's completely dented on the underside of the, where I hit it with the hammer. Uh, same thing here, oh interesting. Yeah, look at that. It actually split where I hit it with the hoe. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is actually cracked open there. So neither of them are fantastic for impact. Um, however, I would have to say, if I'm gonna say one over the other, 
on impact. I'm gonna go with the Vivor tile. Um, again, this thing is definitely beat up as well. Like it, comp it compressed the lower portion, the little tabs that go up. You can see this one's like completely flattened out. Compressed it, it definitely has a divot, um, but I think that it hides it better. I mean, from here, at least on the camera, it looks fine to me. I don't know, once I see this on, on my computer, maybe different, but it looks pretty good still. Obviously the big gash there from the hoe, um, but overall I would say equal impact resistance. They both didn't do a great job, but this one hides it better. Now for me, the cleanliness of it, uh, it goes on both sides, right? The Versatex tiles, the coin style tile, is easier to clean up because if you spill anything on it, it's easier to clean up. You don't have to worry about it going through the floor and having to pull tiles up. If you're looking for something that's just going to look good for a long period of time, man, the Viva is hard to beat, right? It looks really, really clean even after that two weeks that it was sitting in here with stuff on it. Um, all the other little stuff just fell through. It wasn't sitting on top. It looked really, really good still. And then just with the simple blower, it did blow out all the stuff that was that did fall in there, which was a big surprise to me. I wasn't expecting that. So um, guys, moving forward, my choice between these two personally, now again, I'm not gonna be doing a bunch of heavy lifting type of work in my garage. This is my filming studio and detail studio, right? So basic stuff. Um, and I'm going to be going with the Vivor tiles strictly for appearances, really. I, I really like the way those look. I'm not concerned with anything um, spilling on them. This is, you know, again, this is my showroom detail area for my cars um, and for filming videos for you guys. And I love the way those look. Additionally, when I wash a car and pull it in, water's just gonna fall through that. It's gonna evaporate out. I like that. Also, I don't have to worry about any evaporation or uh, any condensation within the slab. Now, one more thing to really consider with those uh, drainage style uh, tiles, regardless if it's the Vivor, Race Deck, Swiss Tracks, is, and I think this is a pretty big concern. If you have an older vehicle, something like that, or just a vehicle that may have a leak, it's gonna be hard to see it on those Swiss tracks because it's just gonna drip through and you're, it's not gonna you know, be a big red flag on the floor, big pile of oil or a big pile of transmission fluid or whatever else. You're not gonna see it, which can be a bad thing, right? It, you wanna see those things as soon as possible so you can address them. With the uh, coin style flooring, you're gonna see it right away. You're gonna be able to clean it up very easily. So really guys, I just wanna communicate both sides of these things. Obviously epoxy flooring would be the similar kind of route. Uh, impact to resistance, I don't know. I don't, hitting it with a, a hammer, I don't know how well that would go. But cleanup obviously would be really, really easy. Um, so it's really up to you guys. I just wanna communicate the different styles, the different options that you have. For me personally, it's more of a visual appeal. I want my garage to look like my clean showroom, perfect area that I feel good going into. And the Vivor, that style drainage kind of a tile is gonna be for me personally. Now I don't have drainage in my garage. So as far as washing a car in my garage, it's not gonna happen, I'm gonna pull them out. Um, so that's kind of a mute point, but, but since I am going to be going with that style of flooring, we will be continuing this test series and we will be putting that up against some of the big boys, the Swiss tracks, the race deck, some of the other ones um, that I originally covered in that first video, just talking about your options. So that's it, make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on all those updates because we're gonna be doing the same type of test, just beating these things up as much as we can. Um, I am going to be, uh, I, I know for a fact right now, I'm at least going to be doing this section of floor with these Vivor tiles. So I will be, again, also called Happy Buy on Amazon. Um, I will be doing this whole section, so we will have a long-term test and, and to see color facets on UV and all that kind of stuff. Again, with all that heat, it didn't change the color. I'm, I was kind of surprised by that. I thought there would be some browning. Didn't do it, um, so pretty impressed with that. However, with that Vivor tile, it did compress that lower panel, um, which I'm assuming the Swiss tracks and things like that aren't gonna do, like, so you can use a jack on it. Um, with the Vivor tiles, you can still use a jack. You just want to put some sort of wood under it, dissipate that pressure, and then you should be fine, but it is an additional step. Again, if you drop coins, or not coins, sorry, coin flowing. If you drop screws and stuff in that Viva tile, it's gonna be more of a pain in the butt. But again, for me, it's appearance that I'm going for. I want it to look really good. So that's gonna be my choice for now. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. We'll see you on the next one.